So you are a toy company. You have a lot of products. A lot of those products are toy trucks, RC cars, something to wheel around. All of these things have tires. So you go ahead and you design a standard tire. It's a wheel. It's got a hub and an outer side that needs to be a little bit rubbery. That's not a big deal. Mold it, machine it, make it with 3D printing. But here's the thing. If you made it with 3D printing, you have the tire, you're producing hundreds of thousands of them. But now you want to expand. A new movie has come out and you want to be on brand. You want to address something on social media. So you go ahead and modify that tire. You maybe change the treads or you change the overall shape of it. That's easy. Now you just send a file over and every tire going forward is updated. And you can continue producing the old design until people don't want it anymore, but you can move into the new design all with no capital expenditure because there's no upfront tooling cost. So now you've addressed the trends of the day, but you keep on listening to your customers and they're like, well, the tires are a little bit stiff. It would be great if they had more flexibility. So now you go ahead and say, ah, oh, well, we want these to be airless tires. Let's go ahead and make some cutouts on the side. That's totally fine. But then you get some more feedback from your customers and they're like, those cutouts are great. The tire is a lot softer, a lot more flexible, has a lot more give and more traction. But now it's collecting all kinds of dirt and debris inside of those grooves on the side. Surely you can't change those, can you? Well, now you're making it with 3D printing, so you can make any geometry you want. So instead of having those cutouts on the side, you simply make some interior pockets. So now you still have the springiness and you're able to create this impossible geometry of this enclosed bubble that is impossible to make any other way. But now you have the same feature as the tire, but it looks just like your old one, but now it's better and it doesn't collect all the dust and dirt. That's great. Now you're addressing what your customers want even more. But your customers come back again and they say, that's all fantastic, but we'd really buy a whole lot more over in this part of the country. If you could change this tire so it could work on sand or have even more traction, those old treads just don't grip enough. So you say, okay, fine, let's update the file again. And you end up adding some nice deep tread onto the side of the tire. It's really easy. You email over the file and now every tire going forward has that updated tread. And it costs nothing more to make than the tire before because all you did was change the file. And since it's still the same baseline, you don't have to change settings, you don't have to change setup, you don't have to change material. All you had to do was change a digital design and now your product, your physical product has been updated. And that's fantastic. Your customers are ecstatic. They're as happy as they can be. You're addressing everything that they want when they want it. You're writing social media trends. You're addressing the new generations of customers who try your product and the new ideas that people want to pursue, the new hobbies that expand. Maybe it's RC cars, maybe it's toy trucks, maybe it's something for a Lego kit, but you're able to address it every time because all you have to do is update a digital file. And now you're making hundreds of thousands of a new product with no upfront cost. But now something happens. A pandemic comes along. The supplier of your hubs has gone out of business. The thing that mounts to your tires, that sets those four holes that need four screws. You found a new supplier, but they only manufacture that aluminum hub with six holes. So what do you do? Well, you're going to go into that model and you're going to update that hub to have six holes, but you're not going to lose any of your production because you can modify your design a little bit and every tire going forward is now updated to work with that new supplier. No muss, no fuss. And if you were really being smart about this, since you were using 3D printing, you were able to make those tires exactly at the rate that customers were asking for them. So you don't have huge warehouses full of inventory that are now out of date. Oh no, you just updated the file and whatever's left of this month's batch might have to be thrown away, but it could probably be recycled or or maybe sold to old customers as spare parts. But next month, every tire will be updated and your inventory will be fully updated. So you have no loss of inventory. You've had no tooling cost and you've been able to address what your customers need and your supply chain has become so much more flexible because you no longer have your tools set in stone. Instead, now all you're doing is listening to your customers and creating better products. And then when you create a better product, it's updated and every product going forward Forward has that update. You are now able to do with your physical toys, devices, trucks, RC cars, whatever it may be. You're able to do with them what developers have done with software for years. Because you were using 3D printing, you're able to mass produce any part that you need with any feature that you need at any scale that you need all for the same or less cost because you've no longer had to set it in stone.
Have a great day, everybody.